exalt the God of our salvation. Hallelujah. We worship the God who lives. His name is Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Greetings to each and every one of you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Thanking God for bringing us here tonight. Uh, those of you that are viewing us online, uh, if it's for your first time, you are tuning into Rafa Christian Center, uh, coming to you from Windsor, Ontario, Canada, uh, in the beautiful sanctuary here at Rafa Christian Center. We greet you in Jesus' name. There is no other name, nothing greater, but his name and his name alone. We also believe that Jesus Christ is a healer. Not us, him. And he can heal all diseases. He can heal all manner of infirmities. We believe that with all our hearts. Tonight we're studying uh, a continuum of the life of Jacob. It is a series that we've been going at now for a couple of weeks. Well, and we'll continue to do so for a couple of weeks into the future. And we're grateful that God gives us this opportunity that we engage in the study of this character in particular, I'll tell you why. Jacob's life encompasses about 90% of the book of Genesis. There's got to be, this individual has got to be a significant man. About 90% or close to it of the book of Genesis. Close to it. I mean, not significant from my perspective. Maybe my math is off, maybe it's 80%. But it's definitely more than 50, right? So it's just amazing uh, to see this. With that said, we have to look in this man's life and see how rosy it was or the lack thereof. To see if when God chooses an individual, if they're now living an easy street. To see if when God says, you are mine, and I had chosen you. Let's see what happened in the life of that man. So, so far, we're now in the 30th verse. going to begin at about the 25th verse. We're in the 30th chapter, beginning at the 25th verse. We're going to see, actually, um, what transpired hereafter. But so far, so far, this man's life is not what I would necessarily want up to this point. Other than there is a promise and a blessing upon his life that cannot be taken off. So we would love that. But we don't know what it entails. Of course, we do in the sense that we know we read through the book of Genesis. But put yourself in this situation where God has made uh, uh, spoken into your life. And right now, it doesn't seem as if God is there. In fact, it would seem as though it's more of a curse rather than a blessing. Make no mistake about it. That's not for you to determine. What is your responsibility as a believer? It is that you believe the word of God. That is actually our ultimate responsibility is to believe God's word. And as believers, we share this good news. Now, as Christians, as Christians... We are bound to be witnesses for Christ. That's one of the things that we uh, essentially must do is witnesses by speaking of his love, speak about the gospel of Christ and what he's done for us within the kingdom of the living God. So Jacob's life is a very interesting one. So you recall he's married to a few, few ladies. They're both sisters. And um, then these ladies, Rachel and Leah, uh, gave Jacob uh, their handmaid uh, to have uh, surrogated children through them. And so we see Jacob here um, just prior to the verse 25 with um, a lot of children. And at this stage, these children that he have with these wives and uh, concubines, they are technically speaking 
still under this authority of Jacob's father-in-law. Jacob, technically speaking, paid for these two women through labor, but he himself owned nothing. And one of the things that we do know, a man ought to leave and cleave. That has been before the birth of Jacob and the birth of Abraham. He ought to what? Leave and cleave. If he refuses to leave and cleave, he's going to run into a whole host of problems with the authority figure of his parents. Because he cannot override that authority. If you're under your parents' roof, if you're under your parents' guidance, if you're living there, you're still under that authority. I don't care how old you are. Uh, we're living in a time now where uh, due to our financial challenges in our economy, a lot of uh, older adult children are heading back home to live with their parents who somehow made it through all their hard time and are quite um, comfortable or at least managing quite well more than their adult children. And so they went back home for financial ease, right? And they want to live as they please just the same way. And parents kind of step in verbally and, and conflict arises. Because it's one thing to see, this is a child that grew up in my house, now coming to live as they please and do what they want in my house. And it usually doesn't work that good. So sometimes we give them a part of the house, would it be basement or a segment of the house, but you still have conflict from authority perspective because I am now an adult and you can come into my room, you can tell me what to do, I'm paying rent even. And so the Genesis principle will alleviate that conflict. Leave and cleave to your, your spouse. So Jacob was living still at Laban's house uh, let me scratch it. Still living at Laban's compound because they didn't have a house as we have it. But they have a huge compound with different um, tabernacles or tents, if you will. Uh, and there. So he was still living under Laban's rules and regulation. But Jacob only purchased via his wages two women, right? But he doesn't own anything else. So all that he's working for is still under his father's ownership an authority, and that's the actual reality. And this is a blessed man who was preferred by his, by his uh, dim eye father. Oh, you don't know, you know who that is, right? And he have all this blessing that, that his dad believe in, but we're not seeing Jacob owning anything. Blessings are not always in material things, brothers and sisters. It's not because of the material blessings, which are blessings, the material things are not the proof to say, well, you are absolutely blessed. Look at that. El Chapo is a, is a name that some of us are familiar with. Uh, it's, a, it's a man that is currently serving time in the U.S. Um, uh, justice um, caught him and put him in jail, well, prison. Uh, a drug um, dealer, it is said, um, not a dealer, uh, a drug kingpin, lord, yes, uh, meaning top of the, he probably even used the drugs. He just, as a business, he climbed to the top. Uh, his, his wealth at the time was such, if you're looking at blessing being what you have, what will you say about that? So blessing does not rest in the abundance of things one possess only. In this instance, Jacob, legally speaking, only owned, owned two women. He actually paid for them via labor. But he was so blessed, according to the blessings of his, of his father, that you would think this man's supposed to be sitting in chariots and is having an easy, easy time in life. But we realized during our lesson so far, that was not the case. Let us continue on in tonight's lesson of the life of Jacob. In the 25th so we conclude that he has a lot of children. Leah uh, had um, uh, six sons. Uh, and then um, uh, there's do a daughter came about. And then she had other sons with, uh, with um, uh, Zelpha and then um, Bilhah and, and Rachel. 
and Jacob were just torn apart. He's accumulating children that someone still kind of want to have ownership over. At some point, he's going to have to make a decision. And thank God, God stepped in and helped him. Because he did. God, God helped him. We're going to see that. Maybe not tonight, but we're going to see that. It came to pass, verse 25 of Genesis chapter 30. Verse 25 says, it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph. Joseph, as we know, is Rachel's first biological son. First biological son. Leah already had five, six kids already. And she had her first biological son, but this is not her first legal son. This will be her third. So Joseph being her first biological son, you can know how, what a burden has been lifted, what a relief it is for both her and her husband. They had a joyous time of relief that God finally come through for Rachel. And as you recall, Rachel was the love of his life. Paid seven years for her. And had to end up paying another seven years in totality just so he could have her for wife. That's how much he desired this woman. And she, it is said, was a very beautiful woman. We could see she was very kind as well. So it came to pass, and Rachel was born, Joseph, that Jacob said unto Laban, who is his um, father-in-law, Send me away that I may go unto my own place and my country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served thee and let me go. For thou knowest my service which I have done thee. So it's, it, this is just saying, look, a, a man is independent. When he's independent. Can I say that again? You can pretend to be independent. Though you may have living in a large compound. Of your own quarters. If you're still under the authority structure. Of your parents. With respect to what goes on in the compound. This is my house. You can't come in certain time. I don't care if you live in the, this part of the house. Or whatever portion of us. That's my front door. I'm paying the, the, the uh, mortgages and what have you. So you can't come in church o'clock in the morning drunk at my house. Not over your life. But mom or dad, I'm 40 years old. You can tell me what to do. I, I will if you live in my house. It would be the retort, right? But for most parents, some parents will just quiet along and they become the kid in their own house which we know that happened too. In this instance, Jacob is demonstrating in Genesis that, look, there is a time and a place for family gathering, and in in a certain time, due to a certain situation, you grow up uh, in a village, and at some point you venture out, leave and cleave. In this instance, if you bring a lot of resources a lot of wealth, a lot of goods to the family structure in that sense. Who want you to leave? Nobody. Amen? Who want you to leave? No one want you to leave. If I have all my, my sons living with me and we live in a, a, a big compound and it's been taken care of through their efforts and means, and I mean, you wouldn't want him to go because, hey, everybody's pulling together because well, what's that? Together we are stronger and, you know, we use all these cliches and they're all correct to a certain extent, right? Uh, but you are now having your own family. You need to take the action necessary to teach your young family what it means to be independently dependent on God yourself and, you know, tread in your part in life. So Jacob was in that same position. He want to go back home to see his mom and dad to, to, to say hello, for, to be sure, but also to raise his own family. And he didn't feel that he was being adequately, efficiently doing that, living under the, the watchful eye of Laban, and he was watching. Laban, the first time we met this guy, he was such a nice person. 
But as we get to grow to know him in our lessons, we realize it was a controlling, manipulative, manipulating, conniving <laughs> rascal. We've seen that now. But before, it was such a nice gentleman. He was. But you cannot judge a book by its cover. Read between the covers. Trust me, my brothers and sisters, that may sound what, prophetic or whatever you want to call it, or enigma. What, make it, don't just take a person because they look so nice. Some of them are not nice. Some are evil in the heart. Get to know the person. Ask questions. Do some research, if you will. In this case, Jacob did none of that. He was sent to his family member. And you see now here in this lesson, who was treating this man so bad? Family members. It, was, it didn't you know, meet some strangers. It was his family members that was robbing him of his independence and of what was rightfully his. Here is this man asking permission to take his wives and kids and move on. In the culture of the time, he better do that or else. And even now, when families are moving out and don't say nothing to, to the next family, oh, what, a, what, a, what a, a, a fuss that costs. You move and didn't say a word? Guess what? It's old. It's been happening for millennium. Don't want the conflict. I don't want to face you. I'll take off that I could face you from a distance. Huh? Now, our distances are, are incredible. We could, we could go halfway around the world, and we could be talking to someone still. But you're not seeing there the heat of the moment. You could hang up the phone if you can't take it no more. Well, Jacob didn't have that uh, privilege or Laban, so we're going to see what's going to happen in the future. So the Bible said that... Um, he, he asked for his family, give me my wives. This suggests that, not suggest, but rather show us the controlling factor that the father-in-law had over Jacob. I also want you to see, in spite of the negative situation that Jacob find himself in, he was still faithful to his duties as a man to his family, faithful, and that's a good character to have, faithfulness. We're not all perfect. He wasn't, but he had some good qualities that we could look onto and realize God see what was in this man. Let's look at Laban's response. I think this is important in verse 27. Laban said unto him, I pray thee or I beg you. So this word pray, I'm not going to go into Greeks and what have you. That's not the lesson. That's not what we're all about. Pray meaning I beg you. Just take my word for it. Okay. I pray thee, if I have found favor in thy sight, in thine eyes rather, tarry for I have learned. Now, let me stop there. Tarry means please don't go. Not wait. Stay. Stay. Right away. No, no, no. If I have found favor in that in thine eyes, tire for I have learned. So Laban said, Look, I've learned over these 14 plus years. Actually, I've learned and realized by experience that the Lord had blessed me for your for for um, your sake. So this man was taking advantage. This man was taking advantage. And that's human nature. Human nature. If someone won't speak up for their rights and you're good at what you do, you will be used. No question asked. Is it a truism? Maybe not quite because it's all going to be an exception to the rule. But it doesn't mean it's not a truism. If you don't speak up, if you don't um, be a confident individual, you will be used if you're really good at what you do. In other words, you will not be fully paid for what you're worth. It's a fact. And it has nothing to do with your color. Always. 
Just say, you're not speaking for your right. So they're going to take advantage of it. For the most part, it's human nature. Jesus said the heart of man is what? Desperately wicked. That's the heart of man. Unless God change that heart, don't trust what's in it. Unless God change that heart, don't trust what's in it. Because it is desperately wicked. Reverend Brown, how do I know that God changed your heart? You have to read between the covers of the book. How the man thinks. Man here does not imply only the masculine. How the man thinks, what the man does, speaks volume to what's in his heart. I learned by experience that the blessing that I now have is a result of you. Please stay. Please stay. So Laban realized, I was blessed. But since you came, my blessing triple, quadruple. So I would love for you to stay. So this is what he said. Appoint me thy wages, and I will give it. Tell me what you want to work for, and I will give it. He's, he's giving Jacob the opportunity now. Just tell him what he wants. He's hoping because he has such a power. This is a, um, uh, not a trust. It's a, what, uh, our dear Jasset, Sister Jasset, uh, Dr. Crooks will know this. But it is uh, uh, where someone is in authority. And you're in the subordinate, there's a, 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 thing, uh, a name or a title or a system for that where they, if they tell you certain things, right, it's automatically you want to do it. But when they give you the opportunity, you, they know you respect and fear so you won't go fully out to say exactly what is yours or what you really want. They're open for you to go less. They're wanting for you to go less. Knowing that you will because you're not bold enough. And they were still at this opportunity trying to rip the man off. And God still remained silent. But he's still blessing. Anything Jacob put his hand to is a blessing. Appoint me that wages and I will give it. So he said unto him, Thou knowest how I have served thee and how thy cattle was with me. Jacob began to retort, it was for a little which thou hast before I came. So Jacob is confirming that it is true as a result of his presence. Laban, riches increase. So Jacob was not at this point stealing anything from, from Laban. Why? He can't. He owns nothing. He only worked for two human beings. So all the work that he's doing, raising these cattle, and they're multiplying, and the goats, and the sheep, and the oxen, they're multiplying, but none of it is his. If, he, if, he, if, 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 if Laban were to say, yeah, you're free to go now, he would, let, let, technically speaking, only have to leave with his wives and kids, maybe, and whatever gifts Laban choose to give him. Though he's living there for 14 years. So in this instance here, we see that um, Jacob now is using a little wisdom here to say, look, I know you're being blessed as a kind of my being here. It was little that you had before I got here. And it was now increased unto a multitude. And the Lord had blessed thee since my coming, confirming what Laban has said. And now... When shall I provide for my own household? Every man that is married should ask this question of himself and seek out the opportunity to take care of your family. Not to sit down and collect, but to work to build up your family. Every man, whether you have a good education or none, you should have this capacity within you as we see here in Genesis. 
You're working for someone. You're building them up. And they're, they're good. But you yourself, raising your family under the, with nothing. So this is a good lesson for young husbands that are coming up, raising, trying to raise your family. You're doing the right thing if you demand your independence from your parents. But not in your house. Your independence to lead. And you know, parents have great psychological skills over their children with respect to, well, you can't leave because of this and that. You can't afford it. In fact, look at the economy. Now, who could buy a house for 500000 for your first? All these things. But they don't mention rent and subsidized renting and, you know, coming together with two independent families, you know, like a, um, start out and you share. Uh, they, they don't want to bring that up. Hey, it's free here. But free here doesn't mean it's good for you independent-wise. Yeah, I'm teaching it because I can't be biased. It's going to teach it as it is. We'd love for our kids to be, when they were younger, to make sure to learn all of these things, save up all it, then you move. But they have to start and hit their knees in the ground and you, you name it to learn what it means to have a value or something that you work for. And this man of God is saying, look, I want to provide for my own household. You've been blessed tremendously by my working for you, but none of it is mine. I'm even asking you to give me my wives. I have to ask you. I go out and work 10 hours for the day, but none of it is mine. The food my kids are eating, the, 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 it's yours. The tent I'm living under, it's yours. Everything that I'm now enjoying, it's yours. He wasn't talking to a stranger, he was talking to a family member. Everything that we need truly is in the Bible. You know, you know what um, the retort is? So he said, what shall I give thee? Again, I'm not begging you for nothing. And that's the answer here. This is a key, brothers and sisters, in verse 31. Laban is using his trickery and his brilliance. What should I give? Because if you give some people something, they said it's still theirs. Or they said, I loaned it to you. When in fact, that was not the case. So giving it or loaning it, kind of technically speaking, you know, it's mine. If you pay for something, can't nobody tell you it's not yours. Right? It just, it just won't work. So he said, what should I give thee? And here is Jacob now doing a brilliant bargaining style. Thou shalt not give me anything. I promise you this is not pride. I promise you this is not pride showing itself. No, sister, no way. This is a man fighting for independence. A big difference. Were well, you too good for certain things? I'm not begging you nothing. No, this is fighting for independence over a powerful father in law, over a powerful culture. I am not asking you for anything. If thou will do this thing for me, I, I will again feed and keep thy flock. I am going to work for my wages. So you're going to pay me as I'm now going to tell you what my wages is. So Jacob, in his bargaining with his father, saying, look, I don't want you to give me nothing. Because he knows the man now. He knows the man now. I mean, if I work for Rachel and I didn't get her, imagine you say you're going to give me something. You keep changing your mind. I will never get it. I will stay for the next 50 years. What, what happened to God's blessing then in my life? So we have to take some personal responsibility as well as individual in Christ to act in what's in the best interest, not only of ourselves, but of God's word working through us. God, make a, a, a word in your life 
promise to bless you. And you say, you know what? I'm going to sit in my house until it shows up. You could sit until morning come. It ain't showing up. You got to work towards it. Brothers and sisters, God promised Abraham you will going to have many children. If the man never have a relationship with his wife and reject all relationship, we have a problem. So is, is J is requirement and participation in that which God has given his word is a, is a reality, is a must. This is not Mary situation here where a father wasn't required, earthly father. But even God had to participate in that. The conception as a result of the Holy Spirit. So here is my wage. I will pass through all the flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle, all the brown cattle, some place it black, among the sheep and the spotted and uh, speckled, speckled among the goats, and after such shall be my hire. Says, so look, I want the spotted cattle, goats, and sheep. To be my wages. So shall my righteous answer from me in time to come. Meaning, should I want a distinctiveness so it is clear. Because all these sheep are yours. All these goats are yours. All these cattle are yours. I'm working in the field and feeding them, nourishing them. You name it, it was a shepherd. But my wage is going to come from here. But a distinction is going to be the color. And his stripes, etc. So we could have a distinction. So now, this is what he proposed to his father in law. Because I know time to come. If we don't make a distinction, what is mine, you would easily say it's stolen. So Jacob now is thinking strategically how to distinguish his wages from among the cattle. Time to come when it shall come to pass, I am before thy face, everyone that is not speckled, spotted among the goats, and brown among the sheep, uh, that shall be counted stolen with me. So will Laban comply? Verse 34 says, yes, he actually will. Look at verse 34 of Genesis chapter 30. Laban said, behold, I would, I would it might be according to thy word. He agreed. Because there was a very few spotted and, and speckled and what have you, cattle at first at first so you agree to it and he Jacob because his wages was now clarified and, and the contract is now um, basically agreed upon I, I want you to know as well contract back in those days is word your, your word is your bond and I live like that in many cases except for buying a house and buying a car <laughs> You can't buy a house and buy a car in today's society by just giving your word. They will rob it from you the next day. Legally. So back then, barter system, which again, we, we teach about that in this, in this church. The barter system was very effective and strong uh, for centuries, actually for millennium. Now we have different style of um, um, goods exchange. But Laban agreed to it. And so uh, Jacob removed the, the, that day the he goats that were uh, ring strike. He also removed the one uh, some, that were, uh, had some white in it, speckled. And all the brown or black among the sheep, those were removed. And he gave them into the hand of his sons. And trust me, kids worked back then. Right? Kid was about four, he's always about 14, 15. They work. Today, unfortunately, some kids still work. Eight, nine hours a day. In country that has a billion people, two countries that has a billion people, kids are still working there like you and I. And perhaps country with less than a billion as well. Didn't call no name. Just got to do a population count. You'll see which country I'm referring to. Kids work. And they used to work sometime in this country too to help their family put food on the table. Some of them have what, a one, a grade three education, some none have to work. 
So don't think it's strange. 14 years only working out in the field? Yeah, David worked too. It's not the ideal thing you want, right? But in these systems, we see they were all out there working. So the kids received the, the, uh, Jacob's wages, and they were to put a distance between um, the, the, the herds. Uh, so they were to be approximately, in verse 36, a three days journey betwixt himself and Jacob. Three days journey. So uh, if it were to take us three days from here to across um, uh, two counting lines, then that's how far the speckled uh, herds were and the one without speckles were. So at least those are his wages for sure. And anything else that born at this location that has speckled will be brought there. That was the agreement. So that's part of the, uh, the old uh, thing. So a three-day journey separate them. And a three-day day, it take you three days to get there. Right? So three sun, sunrise. Betwixt Jacob and his and uh, Jacob's herd and Laban's herd. Jacob took him rods of green. So now we're seeing something here that on the surface looked like some anky panky gonna go on here now. And you're gonna ask me a question. Did that work? How did you know it was gonna work? And so on and so on. Well, as we go deep into our lessons. Um, we see that he probably had some extra help. Now, we could look in today's society and say, could this scientifically be possible? What we're about to read that Jacob did and accomplish. And perhaps um, I didn't go do no research of that nature um, because I didn't think it was relevant. But if you ask me that and I see that you do, then I'll bring the answer back next week. So no one has, so that's great. We'll continue. Okay. So Jacob took him rods of green poplar. That's just a tree branch of hazel, or hazel, not chestnut tree, and uh, a pile on, peel it with white streaks. So he cut it. And um, I recall when I grew up in Jamaica, actually, where you're making those, you get a, a rod and you put some nice, you, you carve your, your sticks and, you know, looks nice. So you carve out some um, sticks with stripes in the sticks and what have you. And Jacob did that. Made white appears, which was in the rods. So you leave the bark, skin the bark, bark, skin the bark, so you see the spotted, right? So the rod looks spotted that he, he carved out. So that's what he did. Unbeknownst to Laban, and be known as the layman. Jacob did that. So we're seeing Jacob, you know, uh, in his old craft. Trickery. Deception. In fact, the entire family, with the exception of his father, is a deceiver. They work the art of deception. Mama, on down. And guess where mama came from? Aaron. So the Aaronites, it would appear, perfect the art of deception. I mean, that's just something I'm saying. You know, so for you to think about, because we didn't see it with Abraham, though they came out of there, but God washed him, God transformed, and God, you know, made him whole, what have you. Um, we only see Abraham had something to say about his wife, which was an technicality, true. And so, but he was using it as a means of deception too, uh, with respect to his wife being his, 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 um, his sister. So Jacob took him rod of green, and again, he, he did all his, his carving into the rod, and he, and he set the rods, which he had uh, piled, piled before the flocks in the gutter, in the water and throat, um, when the flocks will came to drink, they should conceive when they came to drink. So it is uh, understood in a common place that um, these uh, animals will conceive after they drink water, relax in that area, they congregate in that area. And so he will influence um, the outcome, it would seem, of the 
the calves that would be born uh, from um, this, er this area. Now, there's no way he's going to know that could happen because Laban would have that information too. Think about it. So this was not a common knowledge because Laban could have been doing that for years or anyone else. So what we see here, Jacob had advanced knowledge doing this might result in that. We'll see where you get the information from next week. So the flocks conceived before the rods and they brought forth cattle ring, stark, speckled, and spotted. We are led to believe, we are led to believe that Jacob's actions were carving out these sticks, throwing it into the water while the calves or cows, or I mean the goats and the flocks and the cattle are drinking. And then, of course, um, in, in, in conception, they now literally have calves that reflect the carved stick, which result in spotted animals. That's what we're led to believe in Genesis, because we're told that's what happened. Now, scientifically speaking, how is that possible? So maybe some agricultural person who's viewing us could give us some insight into that, uh, so we could um, shed some more light on it for you next week. Um, other than that, I'll give you biblical information in that. So here it always says, and Jacob did separate the lambs. And why is he separating his lamb? That's his wages. That's his wages. So unknown to Laban, Jacob is padding his pocket, so to speak. So to speak. You abuse my time with you, I'm getting you back. I'm going to tell you all, if you feel that you're being abused by your employer, be careful, especially if you're a bookkeeper. Be careful. No, don't tell that God gave you an accounting ability to, to, to pad. <laughs> yeah, because um, Jacob couldn't go to jail. He couldn't lose his life then, I tell you. But it's just not necessarily... Uh, something that you want to go practice right now. So, so some of you are smiling out there. So Jacob deceived his uncle. That is a fact. Because he interrupted the natural process of the, the cattle's giving, uh, conceiving and giving birth. He interrupted the process. The question is, how did he know that it would work? How did he know to do that? Did he do that before? Well, there's no evidence that he did that before. Or did he? Seeing that he asked for the speckled one first. But we also know Laban will not agree to the proposal if the speckled cattle was in the majority. They were few and far between. But Jacob is about to turn the tables on his father-in-law, who I think abused the man greatly. And Jacob did separate the lambs and set the, uh, and set the faces of the flocks towards the ring start and all the brown flocks of Laban, and he put his own flocks by themselves. So he start turning out his own wages now. He basically was printing money. Y'all need to look at it in today's, in today's terminology. Jacob was in the printing press, printing money with his own um, plates, with his own plates, with no security watching. Yeah, I mean, that, this is what it is. So, Pastor Brown, you're talking about the blessed man, the man who carried the promise of God? I am talking about that same one. Well, Pastor Brown, where did he get that knowledge to do those things? Tune in next week or read ahead. So he put his own flock by themselves and put them not 
unto Laban's cattle, because, again, those are his wages. And it came to pass, it came to pass, whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive, that Jacob did lay the rod before the eyes of the cattle in the gutter. This man was cunning. You abused me for 14 years, I'm going to get every penny back out of you. Think about it. So now he feels justified in ripping off, violating his covenant or, or covenant or his contract rather with his father-in-law. He's violating the contract. How is he violating the contract? He's cheating. Plain and simple. It's a fact. The man is cheating. Where did he get his knowledge from? Tune in next week or read ahead. So Jacob laid it right before the eyes and because the thing is, He's not just taking any and anything. He's not printing $20 bills. He's printing the, the large ones. He's printing the ones that mean something of great value. Whenever the strong cattle go into the process of conception, he makes sure to interrupt the process with his carved stick. Jacob laid the rod before the eyes of the cattle in the, in the gutters that they might conceive among the rods. But when the cattle were feeble, this show you know, it's a, Sister Hall, it's a deliberate act of deception. I want to make sure Laban's um, um, numbers are growing, are going up, but not very strong. So the brown ones are stronger. The spotted ones are stronger. The, 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 the stripes one are stronger. And the plain color one, the pale color ones, and don't you go on into some way with your mind, bring your mind back. Uh, they're all weaker now. See? This is just a classic example. Just by mentioning, boom, mind went right there. Classic psychological thing. It's, it's amazing how the mind works. You say to kids, don't touch that. You shouldn't say it. Can now the curiosity go way up there. So all these um, one color, plain color, etc., weak uh, cattle are now piling up in Laban's group. That they might conceive among them, around, but when they were weak and feeble, he put them not in. So the feeble were Laban's, and the strongest was Jacob, and the, and the man Jacob. Increase exceedingly, exceedingly, and had much cattle, maid servants, men servants, camels and asses. I mean, Jacob did this with all of the animals to the point he needed to hire people to work for him. Because now he has something of worth. He has something of value. He's not living under um, daddy's watchful eye. He's now making money via the animals. But hear me, my brothers and sisters. Because someone is driving the nice one on the road, because someone is living in a zip code that you envy, you don't really know how they get there. So stay where and how God is blessing you because if you try to come up to their level, you might find out how they get there and copy them. And with that said, with that said, Jacob become very wealthy under the watchful eye of his, his, his father-in-law. And he doesn't know how the man is doing it. It's such a natural thing. They can't pick up how there's some tax fraud that occur, it takes the IRS or the CRA decades to find out. And usually it's a um, whistleblower. You just can't find out. Everything is so meticulously done, they just can't catch you. Until someone gets short change or whatever, and they spill the beat. Because right now, if Jacob didn't tell us, we would know how what happened. Because his wives didn't know. But we're going to find out that Laban didn't like what was happening. So he keeps changing the wages. 
And the more he changed it, is the more Jacob getting blessed. He wasn't doing the wage, the wage change in Jacob's favor. Jacob doesn't know how to undercut him. And because he, his word is his bond, he couldn't take back the spotted cattles. That was a man's wages. He has camels. He has asses. He has sheep. He has goats. Um, he has men and women servants now. Uh, his compound was getting larger and larger and larger. But there's one problem. He was still living on the Laban's watchful eagle eye. Who still think everything is his. We we'll show you the cunningness of Jacob's ability when he made sure when they agreed upon the wages so there could not be a time in the future when Laban said before the judges of the village, he stole my cattle. No, there was witnesses there. They're his. They belong to Jacob and they're three days journey apart. But Laban was having some weak sheep, weak camels, weak asses, Weak goats, um, they look nice with the one color, but that's it. They were not very strong. All of a sudden, so <laughs> all of a sudden. Now, if you start living in a zip code, if you start driving certain vehicle, but you're working at Walmart, you're going to draw attention to you. That's how a lot of crooks, I mean, a lot of criminals get caught. That's how they get caught. A lot of, you know, crooks out there, that's how they get caught. Because they're working at Walmart. They're working at Walmart. And they go move to Russell Wood and drive in the nicest of, of car. Well, guess what? You are really asking for the CRA to come check you out. But the same thing happens to Jacob. He's working for a man who has thousands of cattle. All of a sudden, his number reach and exceed the man he's working for. Some are gonna, you're going to draw attention to what you're doing. Look what happened in the first verse of the 31st chapter. I won't go too far into it. I'd like to just tie over before we wrap up in the next five minutes. Jacob now hear a rumor. Brewing among the civilian, um, uh, uh, the people, the villagers. He heard the words of Laban's sons. Remember I told you, you know about Laban's son? But as we go deep into it, you will see that, oh, 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 maybe he has some sons instead of the two girls alone. Okay? So there's some rumors in Laban's sons saying, Jacob had taken away... All that was our father's. Now, that's from the son's perspective. But we know there was a business agreement. But these sons are realizing there's no way the speckles is going to be growing that much, that fast. Jacob is up to something. Oh, you do a lot of overtime at Walmart. You're, you're working double shift, triple shift. No, you still can't afford there. So they're going to check you out. So Jacob had taken away all that was our father's. And of that which was our father, he had gotten all this glory. The man was now living an easy street from the perspective of material wealth. But God promised the wealth, did he not? Did he say you should cheat? But was he cheating? Well, come on, church. You know he's cheating, right? Let's, let's not try to glorify the man's action. The Bible said that uh, you took that which was our father, and that's what get you all this glory. But some folks will be jealous and envious of you when God starts blessing you. Just don't cheat to get your blessings. Because they're going to catch up to you. So once, once the rumor started that Jacob stole, which could not be proven because they were all spotted, right? So it could not be proven. And the business deal is if you find one among my cattle that's not spotted, yes, I steal it. So they could not prove the accusation 
that Jacob taken away all that was his father, but he didn't because he worked for it. He worked for it from a business perspective, and all that he had was spotted and, 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 and ring streak, what have you. So on the surface, the man didn't take away your father's goods. But guess what? It affect Laban. He get jealous and start cutting the man's wages. Drive a nicer car into the parking lot at work and see what happened to you the next week. They might find you might come where they said work is a little short and layoff time is coming. And though you're efficient, you just upsize the boss, you might be laid off. Well, Laban is saying, I'm cutting his wages. And we know this by reading ahead of her lesson. I didn't read it right here just now. But Laban is not happy at all that Jacob is getting so wealthy and in such a glorious way. Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban and behold, it was not toward him as before. The man countenance change and he start changing his wages. He start, he start showing his true colors. It took 15, 16 years, but now I see who you really are. If you're going to pay me and I use my shrewdness to increase my, my wealth, don't be jealous. I'm showing you the good part and the bad part. The man cheated, but if you don't cheat and you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't buy alcohol, you don't buy a cigarette, you don't go clubbing, so all that extra money that your friend is using and your neighbor is using to do all those things, you're saving it up and putting it into real estate, guess what? That's good for you, bad for them. But they're still jealous of you. They're still upset of you that you save your money and buy real estate. When they take it and club it and feel good, so they are enjoying themselves. And you might give up a few holidays. You might give up uh, a few this and that. But at the end of the day, when it's time for you to settle down, you could settle down in a good place. When they're settling down and don't know where they're going to settle down because they wasted it all. We're almost finished here tonight. But hear what the word of the Lord said. The countenance of Laban changed towards Jacob. It was not as the way it is before. And when God sees you're in danger, this is where the blessing of God come in play now. He promised to protect. He promised to never leave you. He promised to be with you. When someone turned to hurt you, that's God's job to take care of you. You don't fight your own battle. Amen? God will take care of you. And church, it, 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 we must believe that. And, and so if you don't believe that, you're going to have a problem. You're going to want to fight your own battles and get yourself into deeper trouble. So the Lord stepped in in verse 3 of chapter 31. The Lord said unto Jacob, return unto the land of thy fathers and to thy kindred, and I will be with thee. Every called out one, God promised to be with them. And Pastor Brown, all the hell that this man goes through, you tell me that God was with him all along? Yes. God was giving him the strength to endure the hell that he was going through. In that you will not receive from the Lord more than you can bear. The devil don't care about that. He will give you more than you can bear. But God will ensure you don't get more than you can bear. So Jacob here now get a divine instruction. You recall in previous chapters, uh, a verse rather, and chapter, where he said, give me my wives, let me leave. What did he say? Stay, don't go. Now God is... Um, God is authorizing him to leave now. You accumulate what is necessary to make it on your own. Move out. Isn't it amazing? Some folks accumulate quite a bit, still under mom and dad control. It ought not to be. So he said here, it's time to move out. God told him it's time to move out. God said, return to the land of your fathers. You're not from Haran. You're not supposed to say Aaron. 
you go back to Canaan, right? And to your family, and I will be with you. God says, I will be with you. And remember, God must be with you. Because if God is with you, you can endure any hell that you must go through. Every call out one, know this fundamental principle. Don't give me an angel. I need you. I need you to go with me. And this was a promise of God. Jacob, leave, and I'm going with you. I will be with you. And knowing God is speaking and knowing to pull up stake, and don't ask the permission of your father-in-law. Because you know what the answer is going to be. Don't ask your parents, can we leave now? I, I save up $200,000 for, uh, our, you know, God, God bless you if you can do that. I save up $200,000. Uh, my wife and I, we're in a great job. You know, we have five children. We're still living in half of the house. I think it's time for us to go. What are they going to tell you? You live in here, might as well continue. Miss Swin dead and gone is all yours. Don't want you to leave. So you'll never teach your children what it is to be independent and dependent upon God. Leave and cleave. So next week, we're going to dive into from verse 4. Yes, from verse 4. Uh, to see what transpired when God said leave. Because God is with you now, it doesn't mean you're out of trouble. I think I, I, all of us, we need to really hone in on this. I know we've gone over time. We need to really hone in on this. Because God is with you and tell you to, to move out, don't think that it's going to be so easy you could just put it in cruise and just relax. It's a sad day when you think that is the case because you're going to fail. God being with you simply means you will never fail. His promises are true. And he said, I will be with you. But Jacob has a lot of hell to go through yet. And believe me, he's young now. He's going through so much. I think his worst is yet to come. And still, this is the man that carry the promises of God in his loins. Oh, when I, when I read and study these things, it strengthens me. Michael, it strengthens me to know in our time where God's word is true in our time too, and you who believe in God, don't cry when you fall into trouble. They say God has forsaken you. Nothing could be further from the truth. Had he not been with you, you would have been crushed in your trouble. God bless you tonight. Give your heart to Jesus Christ if you have not done so. And give, give him your heart, meaning just give it up to him. Let, him. let him come in. Let him take his residence in your heart. Trust him for your life. He knows what's best for you. Until uh, Sunday, God bless you in Jesus' name.